Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Wisconsin Eye is on the campus of Gateway Technical College in Sturdivant. Paul Nealon of Delavan is a Republican candidate in the 1st Congressional District. Paul, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Good to be here, Steve. Thanks. Well, one of the most important issues nationally is immigration, and I'm intrigued. You gave, your website says you gave $50,000 worth of AR-15s and drones and body armor to two Texas sheriffs. So tell me why you did that and tie it into our national debate over sure. immigration. Sure. I went down to the border a number of times and a couple of border sheriffs uh, showed, took me out uh, and showed me the border, showed me what was really going on. Mm -hmm. And I watched some dash cam video of them chasing some folks, uh, drug smugglers. They caught one of the SUVs, uh, one got across back into Mexico and the other got stuck uh, in the Rio Grande and, and not a very deep place. but they started getting fired upon by Mexican authorities uh, actually driving a, a, a Humvee that our government gave to them and I saw one of the officers get out just with his sidearm and I said to him to the officer to the deputy why did you do that why uh, didn't you get out and engage him with a rifle and he said well we don't all have rifles and uh, I went back uh, with my team to the hotel that night and I was sitting there and I said you know that just makes me sick that our our guys who uh, are working hard on our behalf don't have the good equipment and God's blessed me with a uh, very successful business career and I said to my wife I think we ought to donate to these guys so we donated the uh, 25 AR 15s a pile of ammo and like you said drones and night vision equipment because we want them to come home every day and you know I guess the broader issue the broader immigration issue uh, that's why I was such an ardent supporter of Donald Trump, and, uh, and still am, is because of two things, Trans-Pacific Partnership and building a wall. Because you can't effectively deport somebody and keep them out of this country without a way to keep them out. And people say, well, we can do electronic or people or this or that. You can't bribe a wall. You can bribe a border guard, but you cannot bribe a wall. So I really believe we need a well-defended, uh, either double fence like Hungary has, uh, or a wall like Israel or uh, has, they work. They really work, and so that that's where I stand. I, I'm a strong supporter of the president and getting this wall built. Uh, position on dr uh, the, the Dreamers, the 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 DACA y y young people. Yeah, they have to go back. Okay. I, I there's no no two ways about it. There's 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 6.5 billion people in this world that make less than the average worker in Mexico, at Mexican wages. We can't invite them all here. We, we just can't invite them all here. And so uh, they have to bloom where they were planted. And I'm, uh, I think that they would be a great addition to Mexico to make Mexico great again. And the 12 million that are here illegally, not the DACA young people, also go back? All, all deported, yes, all deported. all deported. And we have a legal immigration system in this country. I do not want to see it changed. I want to see it utilized. I want to see less legal immigration, but I want our laws to be upheld. There shouldn't be laws for the Hillary Clintons and the uh, Paul Ryans of the world and another set of rules for us, or the Dreamers and another set of rules for us. That's not how this country was designed. And so I'm standing on the Constitution saying, uphold the laws that we've passed and I don't want to see our immigration law changed. When 2nd District Democratic Congressman Mark Pocans uh, introduces a bill this week to abolish ICE, your response? I think that's uh, completely wrong. I think that these guys are conflating ICE with Border Patrol. Two completely different missions, and I think abolishing ICE is absurd. I would suggest to, to Mark Pocan to unlock his front and back doors and leave them open all night long every night because that's what ICE does. They are protection for us. And so if Mark Pocan thinks we should get rid of ICE,
he should just unlock his front and back doors and leave them open every day. You mentioned the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which the president has pulled us out of, yeah. which gets us into the debate over tariffs. Do you back his first and second round of tariffs? Because now he's announced an intent to add more tariffs on Chinese goods. Is, I, it, is the president right on tariffs? He, absolutely. He's headed in the right direction. He's doing the right thing on tariffs. Look, China has been at war with us for decades now, economic war. And tariffs are the right way to solve this problem. And I'll tell you why. China can't feed itself. China has to buy our food. China can't consume all of their own industrial production. We are their market. So China needs us more than we need China. So tariffs, and until uh, the early part of the 20th century, we didn't, we didn't have an income tax in this country. We supported the government on tariffs and excise taxes. So if our government hadn't grown so large, such a leviathan, it's seven times larger now than when FDR was president, seven times larger than in the 40s. So uh, we, could, we could effectively run a very small government on excise taxes and tariffs, not have an income tax, a national income tax, and do just fine. Candidates in the first CD are taking a position on whether the f potential development of Foxconn, a few mm -hmm. miles from here, is a good investment. Is it? I think it's a great investment. I think, you know, we now in this country we're pitting states against each other that are trying to bid for these big uh, uh, economic booms. And I think that we need to be in that race. I think, you know, we're sitting right outside of a training center here uh, at the SC, SC uh, Johnson uh, complex. And, you know, I look out here and I see guys training on very technical equipment that I've had in my factories all around the globe. I love to see this. I love to see this, uh, this uh, organic growth that we we see going on here and I think Foxconn is going to be an attractor to a lot of other businesses that are going to knock on to that that they didn't offer tax incentives to they're going to want to come here and they're going to pay the full boat so people leave that part of the equation out you really can't leave that part of the equation out um, the Trump administration sent Congress a Defense Department budget that would signific significantly increase spending. I believe take it to 700, 700. Billion, billion a year. Yeah. You support that increase? Uh, I support the increase. However, I don't want to see our men and women over in Afghanistan and Iraq. I certainly don't want to see us attacking Syria. Um, you know, we've got all sorts of outposts around the globe. Uh, today, just today, the president is uh, sticking it to An Angela Merkel. Uh, Angela Merkel and he's saying to her look you didn't even pay for NATO the, the money you're supposed to spend and then you're doing deals with Russia you're doing deals with Russia on gas pipelines so we've got we're spending billions of dollars to protect Germany from Russia and Germany's doing deals with Russia it's incomprehensible the president is exactly right to hold her to account and say look if you're friends with Russia what are we protecting you for take all of our troops and put them into Poland if, if we need an outpost there. I spent a lot of time in Poland. It's a wonderful place. I'd love to make sure that they stay free uh, as they are right now. Should we withdraw our troops from Afghanistan? Absolutely. We should put them on the southern border while we're building that wall. Um, the deficit has grown to $21 trillion. How big of a threat is that to our nation? How would you deal with our growing deficit? Oh, it's a big it's a big problem for our nation I think part of the solution is what Trump's doing with the tariffs I think that's going to reverse it a lot because if we're sending these dollars overseas we're only getting one turn on the dollar when we have a manufacturing economy that dollar has multiple turns it goes to the manufacturer who then goes to their sub suppliers who then goes to their base suppliers that dollar stays in the country a long time and it it really helps build the tax base in all of the locales that, that are supplying that, whether it's a manufacturing supply or it's a service supply, accountants, attorneys, all of the support groups that help that manufacturing. So Trump's, Trump's doing the right thing and he's gonna bring down the deficit because those factories are gonna repatriate to the United States. Even Chinese companies will be building. You see uh, Germany's uh, Daimler-Benz builds factories in the United States. Alabama. Toyota builds factories in the United States. Why? Because 
then they don't have any tariff issues, right? Americans have jobs. I've built factories in other countries, in Germany and Poland, to supply that local market, not to ship product back in the United States. I've also closed two factories in Mexico and brought those jobs to the United States and one in Canada. A bunch of those jobs came to Wisconsin. And so uh, it was 2008 and then again in 2014. So I think, I think it can be done relocating factories and jobs to the United States because I would argue we are the most creative, hardest working people on the planet. H hands down, hands down. And I've had, I've had uh, employees on almost every continent. Should Harley not build, manufacture its bikes in Europe? Uh, they're, I don't believe they're building anything in Europe. I believe what they're doing is they built a factory in India and they're going to import bikes from India into Europe. And here's what happened. This happened uh, five or six or seven years ago. They started construction on that. And the reason they built that factory in India is because India tariffs bikes from the United States at 100%. But bikes purchased outside, from outside the United States, Japan, India, anywhere else, there's a 2.4% tariff on bikes coming into the United States, which is why we see so, so many uh, rice burners here in the United States. And I, and I don't knock on anybody who wants to ride a, a bike like that. I, I happen to ride a Harley. Uh, but they built that factory there and they're shipping American parts into India for assembly. Now, they never would have shipped those bikes uh, only into India. We know that that is the first, that is the precursor for any, any business to then, they look their, at their lowest cost supplier and they see if they can ship it. So if India and Germany, for instance, if they don't have a tariff battle going on, of course they'll ship it from there. Now there might be a German consumer who says, no, I want my American bike shipped from America and they could demand that and that's where they'll hopefully get their bike from. But it's, it's hard for the regular everyday person to say, uh, well, isn't this President Trump's pro uh, problem? Didn't he cause this? Absolutely not. They started building that factory like six years ago when President Trump, before he even announced. So I think it's just a convenient, uh, in fact, I didn't even see Harley uh, make a statement on it. It was, uh, it was uh, another group that, that, that uh, Foreign Policy Institute or something like that, they were using their quote uh, quite a bit. Will the tariff issue get resolved before it hurts Harley Davidson? Uh, I think it'll help Harley Davidson. Really, help? I really think it'll help Harley Davidson. The, 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 as we move forward and we get ourselves more into a situation where we are driving the car as opposed to foreign corporations driving the car or um, politicians who are working on behalf of corporations that are uh, have vested interest in foreign owned facilities, mm -hmm. that will, I believe President Trump is absolutely 100% on the right track with tariffs. Um, the, didn't the tax reform package, did, did, you, did you support that? Uh, I supported it. I supported, uh, when Ron Johnson put in that LLCs would be treated like C corporations, I have an LLC. Uh, and very shortly I'm going to have a C corporation uh, when we do the conversion. However, LLCs have been taxed at the personal rate, which is a lot higher than what they were proposing in the, in the tax reduction. Ron Johnson stood his ground and they then now treat. So now I'm on the same footing as C corporations that I'm competing against for the equipment that I design and which is built here in Wisconsin, by the way by Wisconsin factories, Wisconsin workers. So I am in agreement with that, but the way it was portrayed really, if you recall, was we're gonna fill out our taxes on a postcard. There was no personal reduction in that that took us to, the to, to a postcard. We had 70,000 pages of tax code before. When this went through, it probably went to 80,000 pages of tax code. So it was sold as tax reform as if you and I, uh, Steve, would have some tax reform. It's really, it was really for businesses. It really was for businesses. But didn't it worsen the, the, the 21 trillion deficit? It drove that up, didn't it? Uh, no, I think it, I think in the long term it's going to do the right thing. It's going to be, yeah, neutral? oh yeah, yeah, because I think it, uh, no, I, I don't think it'll be neutral. I think it'll bring it down. I think what will happen is with that tax being lowered, it will encourage companies in Germany to build here. 
because they will be able to run at that lower tax rate. That's important. Uh, companies in Canada will relocate their stuff here. If NAFTA gets nuked, which I hope NAFTA gets nuked, and then we do a deal with Canada and we do a deal with Mexico, I think we should have uh, a trade agreement with each of those countries, but it shouldn't be put together. Do we need to withdraw from NATO if those countries don't pay their 2% towards I don't know that we ought to withdraw defense? from NATO, but I think we ought to push them harder on supplying their 2%, or we ought to say to them, like President Trump is, that's fine, we're going to pull all of our troops out of your country, and we're not going to subsidize your uh, defense. I mean, I just read an article yesterday where Germany was on maneuvers, and they were using broomsticks painted black because they didn't all have rifles. Now, my wife and I gave rifles to the Texas Border Department. We're not giving any rifles to Germany, nor should you through your taxes, right? I don't, I don't think that should happen. Germany's got a responsibility to protect its citizens, just like the United States, and, and we shouldn't be subsidizing it. Mr. Ryan was in office 20 years. You believe that members of the U.S. House should only serve three terms? That's right. Total of six? Why? Yeah. Well, because I think that it was never designed to be a career uh, role. I don't believe that it should be. And we term limit the president. We ought to term limit the Senate to two terms, and we ought to term limit the uh, House representatives to three terms. In fact, I believe we ought to have a term limit of 25 years in the Supreme Court. I don't think that people should be going to the point that they're uh, risking dementia or uh, physical ailments that would prevent them from working in the best interest of American. You sent AR-15s to Texas sheriffs. Yeah. Does that mean we don't need any changes in our gun laws? Uh, we do need changes in our gun laws. We need to repeal a number of gun laws that are contrary to the Second Amendment. I do believe that we ought to have national reciprocity, and I pushed very hard. <coughs> Excuse me. When, you, when I leave Wisconsin with my concealed carry permit, I should be able to go to any other state in the Union where I can put my feet on American soil and protect my life. Because who, who determines the value of your life, Steve? You and your God. That's what I believe. And so if I'm in Connecticut, why should Connecticut decide my life is worth less there and I can't protect it? I don't believe that's true. I believe like a driver's license, I ought to be able to go anywhere. And just recently, the Supreme Court ruled that all states have to recognize other states if they have same-sex marriages, which if you read the Constitution, nowhere in there does it suggest that you have to get a marriage license. A license, in effect, is the government saying something's illegal unless you pay a fee and we agree with you to let you do that thing that is illegal if you don't have the license. So essentially, nowhere in the Constitution does it say that they could do that, but they did it. So since it's been done, I want to use that to say my concealed carry license allows me to go any state in the union uh, and protect my life. Let's talk about health care. Your website says that um, the Affordable Care Act, I believe, has been uh, a disaster. Yeah. So what are the next steps that we should take as a nation on health care? Well, I think, first of all, uh, Congress needs to pass a law that says uh, insurance companies can sell any product that they want, that the, that the uh, public will buy, and that the federal government will not get involved in determining what a qualified health care plan is. Because, Steve, we'll if you want... set basic standards. Yeah, right. I, I think, Steve, if you want to buy insurance for, say, um, cancer and, I don't know, uh, diabetes, skin, diabetes, yeah. COPD. Yeah, and I want to buy it for broken bones and for uh, eczema, I should be able to do that. And we should be able to have cafeteria plans and work with, you know, if there's a market for it, the insurance company should fulfill that. Now, if, I don't think that anybody should, should go without insurance. Right? So if somebody has a pre-existing condition and they're not uh, being given, given priority by an insurance company or basically they're rejected, we already have basically a socialized plan called Medicare right now. Mm -hmm. And if one of us were to fall into a situation where we couldn't be insured, we'd go on Medicare and if we could pay for some of it, we would just pay it into Medicare. There would be a means test for it 
it wouldn't just throw everybody, you know, millionaires on to, uh, like yourself, onto <laughs> Medicare. Not so, but <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so, but you would be able to pay for your, you would, you would naturally pay for your part of it, but you wouldn't go without insurance. I think, I think it's important that we have the ability also to say, you know what, I'm a young person. I take good care of myself. My family history is we live to 100 years old, and the first 40 or 50 years of our lives, we're never sick. I'm not going to buy insurance. I'm going to risk it. If I break a bone, I'll pay it out of my pocket. This is America. You ought to be able to do that, I believe, in this country. Right now, they're saying, well, we're going to penalize you if you don't buy things. Now, that has been a little bit rescinded with the Obamacare. So I think we ought to uh, get, get in that direction. The international debate over climate change, is it a threat to our world? I do not believe it's a threat to our world. Okay, Wh why? Uh, there's a lot of evidence showing that the uh, thermometers that they use to measure the temperatures, the global mean temperatures, have been moved to areas that are a with asphalt and concrete and other types of things, and they've changed the, they've gone back in and adjusted the average mean temperatures upward. So that hockey stick has been dispelled. There's been a number of things that have been debunked. The IPCC. Uh, studies where they showed that they were doctoring the, the uh, paperwork. Mm -hmm. uh, look, we've had ice ages in this country. I can remember back in the 1980s when they were saying there's an ozone hole and we're all going to die from this ozone and they got rid of CFCs and uh, uh, all of that. Uh, CFCs don't rise in the atmosphere. They're heavier than air. They all go into the ocean. I mean, all of, I can remember all of that and so there's constantly in my mind, a way to try to reach into taxpayers' pockets and extract their money, just like these uh, windmills I saw when I pulled in here uh, across the street. They have to be subsidized by the government. Look, I'm all for the government looking at ways to uh, have clean energy. We found one a long time ago. It's called nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is, is uh, very clean. 80% 80, 80 of France runs on nuclear. Uh, until very recently, 50% uh, of Germany ran on nuclear. I think they're still uh, running a lot of their electricity on nuclear. We ought to be running on nuclear in this country, in my estimation. I've run money factories that build equipment for nuclear facilities. So uh, clean technology and safe if you, if you manage it. Latest estimate is that Social Security will be technically bankrupt by 2034. How would you save it? Uh, well, I think Trump's tariffs are going to be a big uh, boom for that. And I also think deporting 12 million illegal aliens who have opportunity to get on the rolls, uh, and, I, and I think the number is much higher. I think the number is probably 30 million, honestly. And so I've seen numbers in the area of if we build a wall and deport the people who are uh, uh, financial drain on the system, $165 billion a year that will go, that will stay in the U.S. Treasury. Now, if every year you're sending $165 billion to illegal aliens, uh, when you could be sending it to citizens who earn money and put it into that pool, you've got a huge swing there. So I think that's the solution. Did you support the policy, even though it was, an executive order reversed it, separating children and their parents who had crossed the border illegally? Yeah, I don't think they should have uh, been allowed to come in at all in, in the first place. I mean, for them to come in and then decide, uh, well, we're going to tell you how it ought to be that we're arrested, uh, that, that children and parents are separated. Try going into any other country and see how it works for you. you, you Americans, I, I've, I've lived all over the world and I've worked all over the world. You don't break other countries' laws because their laws they tell you at the State Department, you, look, it, 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 you read it in your, in your passport. It says, uh, this isn't like America when you go to another country. Don't act like uh, y you're under the same laws because you're not. And so you really have to be cognizant. And for people to break our laws by coming into our country and then telling us we're not treating them correctly, they have no right to, um, to tell us that in my uh, opinion and in the Supreme Court's opinion, uh, they have no right to due process. None. Uh, they they are um, in our country illegally, and they ought to be sent back immediately. You ran two years ago. 
Yeah. And how did the announcement by Mr. Ryan that he was not going to seek re-election change the dynamics of your campaign this time around? Uh, well, it didn't really change it a tremendous amount. I've been an American First candidate since I ran in 2016. I ran because I wanted American workers to have a better opportunity at, at securing a job and having safety in their life. And Donald Trump, uh, President Trump ticked both those boxes for me and more and more. But those were the two key issues. Uh, also the refugee resettlement racket that's going on in this country where we bring in people that we haven't vetted and they end up killing us. You know, the, the Kazir Khan incident that President Trump thanked me for in 2016 when I defended him on this situation. I mean, President Trump made a comment and this uh, Khan gentleman took it and said, well, my son died defending this country. Well, that doesn't mean that there aren't people coming into this country of an ideolo I ideology that want to kill us, because they are. It's, been, it's demonstrable. Uh, so I'm, I'm absolutely in, in line with President Trump's moves on stopping illegal immigration, uh, following the rule of law. You separate kids from their parents. We take care of both of them. We're not starving them. We're not beating them. We're not waterboarding them. We're separating them because we, we're trying to understand who we have here. We have a right to know who's coming into our country. Final question. Sure. Five-way primary on August 14th. Yeah. Do you want to highlight differences between you and the other four candidates? Well, uh, sure. I'm the only candidate who has had uh, employees and made payroll here in Wisconsin. Uh, we've got a candidate from Virginia who's only very recently moved here, Nick Pulse. Uh, he was in the service, great. Give him that uh, for being a veteran, but that doesn't mean he knows anything about Wisconsin. Um, Brian Silverspoons, Brian Stiles, his grandfather was the Wisconsin uh, first lottery commissioner and his dad was on the team that won the $749 million for their law firm and the tobacco settlement. I mean, he's obviously very wealthy, very politically connected. His claim to fame is he picked Paul Ryan up at the airport and drove him to his house. I mean, to say we have elections in Wisconsin and you see the Wisconsin GOP attacking me when I was a very valuable member of the volunteer staff and, and a donor. I was a diamond sponsor at Burlington Fall Fest. They are of the belief that it's, they ought to have selections in Wisconsin, not elections. And I don't, I don't buy into that at all. Jeremy Ryan and I had a debate yesterday, last night, uh, in Delavan, and it was very civil. And we had, you know, 40 people show up for that. We had about as many people that show up for a GOP event. And, and the GOP won't invite Jeremy or I. And I think it's really despicable of them. And we went out and we got the required number of signatures. Uh, and there will be another debate on July 20th in Janesville at the Basics. And I hope anybody who sees this will come out and, and uh, participate. And there'll be four candidates there. Uh, Kevin Steen has agreed to come along. Uh, he's an applications engineer somewhere here, I think in Burlington. I don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, seems like a, a, a good young man, uh, but I don't think he's run big businesses or had a lot of responsibility, which I guess doesn't preclude him from running for Congress, but uh, I don't think he's got as much breadth of experience uh, there's an independent who's running who's a doctor, you know, God bless him, he's trying to do good things for humanity. Um, again, I, I feel like I've got the most experience and will fight hard for Wisconsin residents and Wisconsin workers, and I've demonstrated that uh, since I moved here in 2008. Thank you. Paul Needlin of Delavan is a Republican candidate in the 1st Congressional District. The primary is August 14th. Paul, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. God bless you, Steve. Good seeing you again. Thank you very much. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association Marshfield Clinic Health System and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel